Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Total Biscuit. I'm probably going to regret this, but hey, when has that ever stopped me before? The matter of Shadow of War's monetization and business practices, the forthcoming sequel to the rather excellent Middle-earth Shadow of Mordor, has been the discussion of several co-optional podcast episodes. There hasn't really been a video on its own about it, didn't really feel like I could have necessarily added a huge amount to the conversation. A lot of people had already made that video, so I avoided it. I'd really been focusing an awful lot on covering new games that weren't getting a lot of attention. However, amongst the various things that the publisher of Shadow of War has organized, that being Warner Brothers, includes loot boxes in a single player game, followed by an announcement that there would be a ranked meta multiplayer mode, which takes those loot boxes from simply paying to cheat in a single player game, which is silly enough in and of itself, to actually paying to literally win in some sort of ranked multiplayer mode where it's actually possible for your characters to permanently die. Yes, so, hey, you want to buy some loot boxes to replace all those dead orc captains? Aha, uh -huh. yep, that's in it. There are a pile of pre-order bonuses, there are several editions of the game, Standard Edition, Silver Edition, and Gold Edition, and that is on the digital platform alone. That's not talking about the various physical collector's editions. This takes the cost of the game up to $99.99 if you wish to buy the Gold Edition, as opposed to the $60 that the regular edition is priced on. A, we're totally not a season pass, but we're actually a season pass system, whereby all of the DLC that is supposedly coming out for this game has already been announced and is included with the Gold Edition. So they're not calling it a season pass, but it obviously is a season pass, including the Slaughter Tribe Nemesis expansion, the Outlaw Tribe Nemesis expansion, the Blade of Galadriel story expansion, the Desolation of Mordor story expansion, and of course some loot boxes along the way. And... Because the games industry is in a perpetual state of embarrassing itself and those associated with it, a deal with Totino's Pizza Rolls, offering sweepstakes and codes to redeem in-game gold. In the meantime, conquer your hunger with the help of Pizza Roll Snacks and Totino's Pizza, it says. Save Middle Earth and score epic prizes and bleh. That's the feeling that I get when faced with Totino's Pizza Rolls most of the time. All of this is pretty terrible for a wide variety of reasons, and there have been a surprising number of people willing to defend it, particularly when it comes to single-player loot boxes, claiming, well, you don't have to buy them. We've seen this argument before, and the counter-argument is exactly the same as it was when it was first introduced, and the first example that I can think of was the ability to pay for resources in Dead Space 3. If you genuinely believe that they would ever not mess a little bit with the drop rates to encourage you to buy loot boxes or make the grind just a little bit longer than is comfortable in order to buy loot boxes, then you're out of your mind. There is also accompanying that the tacit admission that your content is evidently not fun enough to the point where we might want to pay to skip some of it which in a single-player game is frankly not a good look. That is indicative of a lot of filler, and in open-world games in particular, that is without question a problem. However, this has kind of been discussed to death, and none of this is really new information, and I've talked at length about the concept that we used to enter a cheat code for this kind of thing, and now we enter our credit card information. There are huge numbers of obvious problems with that, and frankly, when dealing with non-cosmetic items in a single-player experience that just happens to have that ranked meta mode, it's basically an indefensible practice when it comes to saying that it's harmless to the game, because it clearly is not. However, not oh, this all pales in comparison to what has occurred today. It was an extremely sad announcement a little while ago about the passing of the executive producer of Shadow of War, Michael Forge. He was 43 years old. He discovered that he had a form of cancer, which was aggressive, and about a year later, he passed away. Needless to say, the developers wanted to do something for him. They wanted to immortalize him in the game that he worked so hard on, and of course they should do that. That is absolutely the right thing to do. And they decided to do just that by creating Forthog 
Orc Slayer, which is a mysterious stranger-like character who will occasionally show up to one-hit kill your enemies, and it was named after a combination of Forgy, Michael Forgy, and the band which he played in, which was made up of Monolith staff, called Orc Slayer. You'd be surprised how many developers have in-house bands, by the way. Blizzard, you're probably well aware of, with level whatever the hell Tauren Chieftain it is these days, but you get the idea. So far, so good, right? Good way to immortalize the guy in a world that he was so instrumental in creating. Excellent. Great up until this point. And then it was announced as Day 1 DLC that you have to pay for. Now, this is where things start to get really touchy and really sensitive. And before I go on, I need to make one thing extremely clear. I have no interest whatsoever in profiting from controversy surrounding a charitable effort to raise money for the family of somebody that died of cancer. For God's sake, I am currently battling cancer. That would be the last thing that I would do. So, all of the revenue from this video will be donated to an appropriate cancer research foundation, and I will not be making any money off of this video. Now that we have that out of the way, and I ask all of you to try and approach this in the most empathetic, calm, and reasonable way possible. This DLC is being sold on day one, and according to an announcement and many media outlets that parroted it, the proceeds are going to the family. That sounds great, except a lot of them aren't. And an awful lot of people have neglected to mention this, and this has turned it into a consumer advocacy issue. And that is the last thing I ever wanted a charitable effort to turn into. I'm somebody that very much believes that the motive of charity is irrelevant. The act of charity is what matters. We should not be analyzing the motives of someone who is doing charitable things. Because that is a really good way of convincing people to stop doing charitable things. In this case, though, what has happened is that Warner Brothers has said, we are going to give $3.50 of every Fortog Orc Slayer purchase. And bear in mind, this DLC costs $5 to the family. Now, the fact that they're not giving all of it, I can forgive that. Okay. All right. You're still profiting from the death of a developer. And that's way beyond the processing fees here. You know, it doesn't cost $1.50 to process a $5 transaction. That's absolutely false. You're profiting, but at least the lion's share is going to the family, right? So I can forgive it. Except, right in the fine print, right at the end of the announcement video, there is a little exception. I'm going to put it up on the screen right now and zoom it in because you would be forgiven for missing this like almost every media outlet did. If you read right down the bottom there, you will clearly see the exception and it's a big one. Donations will be made on purchases from any one of the 50 US or District of Columbia, but excluding purchases made from the following states. Alabama, Hawaii, Illinois... Massachusetts, Mississippi, and South Carolina. Void where prohibited by law, your purchase is not tax deductible. Now, it makes sense for the purchase not to be tax deductible. It's not a purely charitable donation. You're buying a product, so not the same thing. However, this is extremely important. Not only do not all of the donations that come from the United States go to the family, but the purchase of the DLC outside of the US results in zero dollars going to the family and all of them going to the publisher. This is not mentioned anywhere else. This is a tiny little footnote at the bottom of a trailer that is deliberately designed to be hidden right below a much, much larger thing that says Warner Brothers Games will donate $3.50 of every Fort Hog Orc Slayer purchase to the Forgy family through December 31st, 2019. Now you might think, well, Total Biscuit, that doesn't say that your donation wouldn't count if it's outside the US. Well, yes, but that's what it means, and also the official Shadow of War Twitter account confirmed this. So does that mean my purchase of the DLC through Steam from Canada won't count towards donations to the Forgy family? Shadow of War Twitter replies, you are right about that, but you can also help by spreading the word. Thanks for your support. 
to put an icing on the cake, you can pre-order the DLC memorializing a dead man. Because of course you can. Oh dear. Well, all I can say is I wasn't getting review copies from WB Games in the first place. I'm certainly not going to be getting them from them now. I think you can see what the problem is here. They have disclosed the information that your donation will not count unless you live in the US in certain specific states in the least obvious way possible. It's in tiny print at the end of the trailer, which most people will not see. It is mentioned in the YouTube description, which nobody will read. And it is mentioned on the Steam page. However, as I mentioned, the wording is not clear and specific. It does not explicitly say what we now know to be true, that if you are outside of the United States, no money from your purchase will go to the family. Major media organizations have not bothered to mention this and have fundamentally failed in their duty to the consumer to let them know. These include Eurogamer, Kotaku, GameSpot and more. In fact, these articles read almost identically, which indicates that they literally just published the press release without checking a damn thing. Considering my current position in particular, with my ongoing battle with this illness, this strikes really close to home and is very difficult, impossible, I would say, to approach without a very clear disclosed bias on my part. We can look at the positives of this. Yes, they are going to raise money for the family. It's going to help. This guy is going to be immortalized in the last game that he was involved making by a studio that obviously loved and respected the guy deeply. That's great. On the flip side, it is going to make more money for Warner Brothers. Even when they're giving the donation, they're still making a profit on this DLC. Everybody outside of the United States, which would be the majority of purchases for this game most likely, will be contributing zero to this charitable effort and everything to Warner Brothers in the purchase of this. And there is a pretty deliberate attempt to obfuscate this fact and to disclose it in the weakest and most easily missed way possible. And it indicates to me that they did not mention this in the press release because all of these identical articles from these old media organizations all fail to mention it in exactly the same way. As a result of that, this may very well, if you look at it from that justifiably cynical perspective, be possibly the most disgusting DLC practice I've ever seen. It is tarnishing the memory of a man. It is creating a controversy around a grieving family. And the fault of that lies squarely at the foot of Warner Brothers games. It's a bit of a flabbergasting situation, really. I don't want to generate outrage. I would encourage you strongly not to be outraged over this. I'm a bit upset, there's no doubt about that, I think you can probably tell that in my voice, this this affects me in a big way because of how much of a part of my life cancer has become over the last three years. It's pretty much unavoidable. Instead, I respectfully request that you engage in calm, respectful and productive consumer activism on this particular subject because there is a way out of this. There is a way to make it better. There is a way to, quote, fix the situation, as it were. What we could do is we could, in large numbers, ask calmly and rationally Warner Brothers Games to keep what they currently have, which is donating US purchases with the exemption of certain states directly to the family, and add to that that any purchase from outside of those states, any purchase from outside of the US, results in a matching donation from Warner Brothers Games to an appropriate charity research foundation. There are various legal quandaries, I would imagine, that have caused this situation to occur when it comes to donating to the family specifically, rather than a registered charity. 
But what could be done is that Warner Brothers could be encouraged to provide those matching donations to a charity for all of those purchases outside. I don't see a problem with that because you're not taking the money from the product. You're simply pledging a matching donation for every purchase of said product. My knowledge of US charity law is not exactly up to snuff, but I would imagine that that is quite attainable, and I would think that Warner Brothers' monolithic legal team could probably figure that out. I think that that would be a much fairer way of doing things. I think that that would ensure that there was no deception going on, on the part of literally exploiting a dead person to make profits. I would think that that would solve the issue of misleading consumers. And I think that that would put the DLC in a very positive light and frame it in the way that it was intended by the developers. Let's make that absolutely clear. There is no cynical person inside of Monolith that is saying, how can we make a little bit extra scratch off our dead colleague? No. This was a decision from Warner Brothers Games, as has frankly been every single silly decision up to this point. Monolith just wants to make a good game and wants it to be successful. And... Do not give me your arguments about games are expensive, we've got to pay developers. There is no way that this game is not going to be successful, but everything that Warner Brothers has done up to this point has put a further barrier in the way of concerned and responsible consumers when it comes to thinking about buying the thing. And rightfully so, because you can't participate in the product and not support those practices. It's not possible. You can't just say, well, I'm just not going to buy the loot boxes. You still bought the game despite something being put into it, which will, without question, disrupt the experience for everybody, including those that did not buy into the loot box system. That's still an endorsement. That is still you voting with your wallet that these things are okay. The only way to not do that is to not buy the thing, at least not until it's much lower in price. Don't buy things on launch that do horrible stuff. That's a hard thing to do, and it's hard to care about video games to that extent when you're not working in the industry. I totally get that. You have got real problems. That's something we all have to understand when we write from our little vaunted ivory towers in this industry. Your regular consumer has real problems to deal with, and frankly, they don't care about this crap. I understand that. In this case, though, I feel that with enough calm, rational, and empathetic voices, with people who are sensitive to the fact that this studio has recently lost a loved colleague and are still in mourning for that colleague, and a family has lost a husband, a father, and are still in mourning for him, that this could be turned into a more positive outcome. If Warner Brothers were politely shoved in the direction of doing the right thing across the board, not simply in 44 US states. This should not be an ugly thing. This should not be the cherry on top of the bullshit that has been coming out over the last few months about this game. That is the last thing this should be. That's turning the memorial of a man into... A further example of DLC practices gone wrong. That, that's, no, we can't, we, that is not okay. We can't let that happen. We can't let that be the thing which dominates the conversation. It's, it's just wrong. You, you not, of course you can understand that. Of course you can understand why that is just wrong. Okay. As I said, please pass your concerns along calmly, rationally, and with empathy and sensitivity to Warner Brothers. At WB Games is a way to contact them publicly on Twitter, for the love of God, please. And do not engage with trolls that try to turn this into something it's not. Do not freeze them out. Ignore them. They're not part of the conversation. They don't get to come to the table if they're not willing to play nice. And as for the proceeds from this video, I'll be donating them to the Effort Defeat GBM. This is the form of cancer that sadly took Michael Forge's life. It's glioblastoma. It is a nasty, complex, treatment-resistant, deadly form of brain cancer. It accounts for 45% of all brain cancers, and it is referred to by acronym as GBM, glioblastoma multiform. 
There is a research collaborative, which is a subsidiary of the National Brain Tumor Society, that is looking to find the solution to this. We're going to donate all the proceeds to that, and if you would like to donate yourself, you are more than welcome to do so, and I've provided you a link in the description below this video if you wish to do that. Thank you very much for watching, folks. This was not pleasant, but I think was necessary. And I hope at least we'll bring some calm and decorum to a conversation that is already getting really, really ugly. I'll see you next time.